Well, okay. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Samantha. I'm going to be talking about how to test your atoms today. I work at Yworks. Uh, we are a consultancy from Uruguay that does Rails and JavaScript. And one of the things that we usually do to keep up to date with technologies and to be able to try things that are not specifically related to projects is having a technical Thursday. Um, what we do here is usually team up and either work on side projects or maybe presentations of things we want to try. And one of the things that came up, came out of one of these Thursdays was an add-on um, called Ember Unit Nice Errors. Our idea was to be able to provide better messages for the tests that fail, especially when you have an assert that just says um, false is not true. <laughs> That's not very helpful. And one of the hardest parts of working on this was actually the testing. Um, it took us a while to figure out how to test uh, this specific case because we are going to see there are different cases of add-ons and each one is tested differently. So one of the things that you usually want to to know when you do an add-on is if it works. You also want to know if it will work uh, once it's installed on our app, especially if someone else is going to be using it. You don't want a break <laughs> someone else's app. And you usually want to also know if it works with other versions of Ember, either older versions or, or if it will work with Canary or beta version, just to be able to track um, if it still works and if you need to change something or as information for your users. Um, as I was saying, not all add-ons are equal and we are going to see different cases and how to test each one of them. I'm going to split up the add-ons in three categories. One is the, those that add components and helpers to your app. The second case will be the add-ons that add commands and blueprints to Emberkly and that you can use also on your app. And the third case, uh, that is the case of our add-on Emberkly unit errors, are the ones that change the build or step into the build process of um, your app of Emberkly. So the first case um, with components and helpers, let's just say we have this basic um, add-on that takes a message and displays uh, an image of our mascots and the message that you gave it. First, let's see what's the structure of a typical add-on once you create one um, with Ember Generate add-on. It will give you this folder structure and when you add one component, it will be placed in add-on components and there's the JavaScript for your component. And it will also create a test folder and an integration test for set add-on. If you notice, the test folder is pretty similar to the test folder of a regular Ember app. So to test the component itself, we are going to take this integration test. And if you see it, it's pretty much the same integration test that it is for a component inside an app. So you have access to both QUnit, Ember QUnit, the test helpers and the HTML bars precompile. And with this, you can just do a test, render your add-on, and then assert that we have the image and the text that we wanted. So it's just like testing a component inside a regular app. There's not much to it. What if we want to do an acceptance testing of this component it usually is enough with integration tests, but if you want to have an acceptance test, you can. As I showed you today, here's the folder structure. And inside the test, you will notice a folder that is called dummy, and it has an app inside, inside, yeah. So when you create an add-on, by default, it also creates a dummy app inside your test folders. And here you can do an acceptance test and use the dummy app uh, for it. 
So what I did was inside the application template, I just rendered the component, and then I can create an acceptance test that is also the same as an acceptance test inside a number app. I have the same helpers. And I can just visit the index URL that it will load my application template. And then I can assert that I have the image of the component and the text of the component. So the second case here on this category is adding a helper and how to test it. It's, let's say we have this simple helper that takes a string and another string and replaces it um, and renders it. So to test it out, here if you look at the folder, you also have helpers that are also placed inside add-on slash helpers on the implementation of your helper, helper. And by default, it also creates an integration test for it. But you can also add a unit test. And in some cases, you will want to have unit tests for um, your helpers because it's easier to test all the cases here. So the integration taste test is the same as uh, an integration test from a component. I have here, I render um, a template with my helper and then I can just check if that string is the one I wanted. For the case of the unit tests, it's also the same as a unit test inside a number app. So I get my helper, I use QUnit and number QUnit and I can just call my helpers with all the params and test if the result is the one I wanted. So for the first case of components and helpers, we just saw that testing them is the same as testing it on an app. You can use QUnit and you can use Ember QUnit and that if you want to do acceptance testing, you can use the test dummy app for it. Okay, so the second case is comments and blueprints. Um, before going into how to test them, I'm just going to give a little explanation of how you can create a comment for Ember Clay. It will run as Ember and the name you gave it. For implementing one, you have to extend the Ember Clay command model. And once you include your add-on on your app, this command is, well, is going to be included um, and you can run it with Ember Clay. This is pretty much the code for an example command. Here I take um, the command model, I extend it, I name it. This is what you are going to use when you say ember, and in this case, greeting. And this function, the run function, is where you actually implement what that command will do. So I have just a simple case here that it takes the date, it checks the time of the day and it gives a message either good morning or good afternoon or good night. And to include this command with your add-on, besides implementing it here, um, one thing, if you notice, it's not placed inside the add-on folder. This is because it's not going to be included in the code of your app. It's actually an extension to Emberly. So we place it in lib commands greetings and we have, every add-on has an index file that gives you access to the live hooks of Emberly, and you can do different things. One of them is define which comments will be added by your add-on. So I have this function included comments that is an Emberly function, and I require my file, and just by doing that, now I have access to Ember grading on the console. So to test it, uh, as I said, this is not going to be included inside your app, so you don't actually have access as with co components and helpers to um, QUnit and Ember QUnit as you did. You will need to test it differently, basically doing a node test. And in this case, what we can do is use Mocha as a test framework. Here I have a folder with all my node tests. I have an acceptance test, and I also have a unit test. So let's first see the unit test. I start by requiring my command. This next helpers, I actually internal helpers of Emberly, and that is because once 
and Berkeley instantiates your command, it, uh, it gives it a UI, an analytics, and a project. And if you want to run your command, you need access to this because they are called internally. But we have mocks that we can use just for testing. We also have a mock for the UI. And here I'm creating um, an instance of my command. So to test it, I'm going to be faking the data uh, so I know it gives always the same output. And here I called the run method. And then I check that the UI, um, the output is the message I wanted. That is good morning in this case. For acceptance testing, we actually what we wanted to do here is check that the command runs, so we need to have something similar to um, a shell. And we can use uh, the node child process library here to execute a command just as would you would execute any shell command. So we execute ember greeting and we take the output and check that the message matches what we wanted. The next case is blueprints. Um, to be able to add a blueprint, well, what it does actually is, is like an extension of Ember Generate. When you have a blueprint in your add-on, in, you include it in your app, you can call Ember Generate the name of your blueprint and it will generate the files that you defined on said blueprint. So if I have a model blueprint, I can call Ember Generate model user and it will call uh, generate a user. That's, for instance, what Ember Data does. And to create a blueprint, we can use also a blueprint. And so you can call Ember Generate Blueprint and give it a name. And it will generate this folder structure. So we have a blueprint folder that is also outside our app. And here is model. And basically what I'm saying is that when my blueprint is called, I want the files to be placed in root, that is the app folder, the path that I give as a command, and the name that I use, the arg last argument, is going to be the name of the file. This is just a simple file, similar to the Ember data model. Uh, Blueprint is just the basic model. So even though we don't have our blueprints in our app, so we, do, we can you know, use the basic testing. We have a helper for this, and the helper has a test generator. We call it by doing Ember install, Ember clean blueprint test helpers. We can generate a blueprint test for our model blueprint, and this is the file it will generate. You can see here at top that you have um, a blueprint helper that has a number new method and a number generate destroy method. We also need to require the expect. And basically we can use ember new to simulate what the ember new command does. So it basically does um, memory app like a mock of a number app. And after running ember new, so after having our fake app on memory, we can call ember generate destroy, and the arguments I'm giving is model and foo, that is the name I want my model to have. So this will call my blueprint. And after that, I can just check that the file was created under app models with the name I gave it, and that it has the text that my blueprint had. So for testing commons and blueprints, um, we've seen that we need to do node tests, not Ember unit tests. For the case of commons, we will have to use Ember clean mocks to be able to create an instance of a comment and test it. For acceptance testing, we can use the child process from node to execute our shell comment. And for blueprints, we can use Ember clean blueprints test helper. So our third case is when you change the build. And for this case, I'm going to use um, the add-on we created as an example. So basically what we wanted to do was take a test like the one atop 
that doesn't have a message and transform this into the test below. That is basically the same test, but it has the message on the assertion, so when it fails, it will show this message. To be able to achieve this, we're going to use um, a broccoli filter and a transformation. So a broccoli filter um, is a helper class that allows us to create a broccoli plugin that it, we can place um, in our build process. So the Broccoli build is a broccoli, broccoli process, and with a plugin we can step inside process. And this filter basically takes um, an info, input file, allows us to do some transformation, and generates the file on the output after this transformation. And to be able to have this run on the actual build, we need to also change the index file on your add-on. So we have our test uh, filter implemented here and on the pre-process tree method. This is before Ember Creator runs all their broccoli plugins. So Babel is a broccoli plugin. I think it also um, minifies the code and all of that things. Before that runs, we can run our plugin. We're just saying that for the test files, we want to have this transformation applied. So we were going to need to test three things here. One is that the transformation actually works. We have an IST transformation. I'm not going to show the code because it's a bit extensive, but you can access it on GitHub. So we have also, um, our files are not inside the app, are inside a lib folder. We have this transformation and the test, the unit test for it. So to test the transformation, since it's a symbol or just code uh, function, we require it. We also have a, t a set of fixtures where we have the original test file and the one we expect. We're going to read the original file and the one we want to have at the, at the end. We apply our transformation and then just check that both match. Now the second thing we want to test is if the filter actually works because we can give params and have different cases. Um, okay, so to test the filter, we require set filter, and we also have broccoli test helper that allows us to do or simulate the build of broccoli. Here we have make test helper, and with that, we are saying it to create a build of this folder. We are going to give it in a second. And here in subject, we are saying that for the tree of that folder, we want to run this filter, that it will take all the files and run through our transformation. So we call the build with um, the path to our fixtures, the ones without the transformation, and after it runs, we just go through each one of them. We read the result. We also have a fixture with what we expect, and then we just check that both match. So, so far, we know that our transformation work, we know that the filter works, but we are not entirely sure if it works inside an app and if it won't break our build or the build of our users. So we want to test that, that it actually changes the test files, not just any file. So for that, we are going to do an acceptance test. Thankfully, we have also an add-on to help with that. That is Emberkly add-on test. This allows us to generate um, an Ember app in memory. It's actually an Ember app with the fixtures pad with, say, the files we want to have on that app instead of just having a regular app. In this case, I want to have uh, certain files that are on this test folder. This will include tests that I will test if they are transformed or not. So after I create the app, I tell it to run the build, and then I check the this file for the tests. So this is an actual build, so we have the same file I have when we run Ember build on our app. And here I 
read that file and just check if this specific assertion has the message that I wanted to have. So now I know that it not only doesn't break the app, but it also transforms the files as I wanted to. So for agents that modify the build, which know that we need to also use node tests, we have access to broccoli test helpers in the case that your add-on is actually a broccoli plugin. And we can use Emberkly add-on test uh, for the acceptance testing. Now I'm just going to give like an introduction to what you can use to make sure that your add-on works with different versions of Ember and you can run your test against different versions. And for this, you can use Ember Try. That is also already included with your add-on, so that's a hint that you have to use it. Um, the easiest way to to use it is having in the package JSON the versions you want to test your add-on against. So here I'm saying that for every version bigger than 1.11 and less than 2, I want to test my, my add-on. But you can also change the config file. And here you have more options for customization of what you want to test. So for this, you define the scenarios. You give names to each one of them and you can list all the dependencies that you want your, uh, your add-on to run against your tests. So also each scenario has more options. One is allowed to fail. That is, for instance, helpful if you are testing against Ember Canary, that you want to make sure that your add-on runs, but if it fails, it's not such a big deal, that you don't want your entire test to fail. You can use this helper. And another help, helpful option is the command one. By default, Ember Try will run Ember Test, so it will run all your tests, but you can also change, um, just run a certain group of tests, or you can actually run other commands, pretty much any command, like Ember Serve, if you wanted to load your app with a set of versions. Or we are going to see that you can also use it to run no tests. On your NPM dependencies, you can Besides uh, giving specific versions of your dependencies, you can also say to ignore one of them. Like here, I don't want to load some optional package. And for all the versions of Ember uh, that don't have the Ember source as an NPM package, you need to use the Bower dependencies. And as I said, you could also use this to run your node tests. So instead of Ember, Test, I say run npm run no test, and this will also run my tests. This is an example of the output of Ember Try. It just names all your scenarios and if the test failed or not, and lists all the dependencies for each one of these cases. So, with this uh, overview I gave you, I think. Hopefully you will have the tools to answer if your add-on works, if it will work inside an app, and if it works with other versions of Ember. Thanks.